levels by Picante and our lovely Super Mario Brothers runners on the couch. Thank you, y'all, and take it away. Good luck. All right, so this is Super Mario Bros. 2 for Super Players, of course. Uh, <laughs> better known as Lost Levels. It's the sequel that was originally only released in Japan, uh, but came to the U.S. on the SNES port Mario All-Stars. So I'm going to be doing uh, the Warplus category of that to follow up uh, SMB1. I will start in three, two, one, go. All right, so the first jump in this game is actually kind of painful. Let's see if I get it. All right, cool. All right. Uh, it's very <laughs> common to die there and just reset. So this is Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels. Notorious uh, for its difficulty, uh, we are doing the Warpless category, Warpless D4, uh, which we go through worlds 1 through 9 and then A through D. If you can do the math, that's 52 levels. The longest uh, Mario 1 physics uh, main category here, so it's kind of a gauntlet. Um, this game is very similar to SMB1, except the jump height that you get off enemies is slightly different. You actually go higher in this game, and that allows us to do some fun jumps. Um, but other than that, because we're playing on the All-Stars version, there are some stuff changed from uh, the FDS version. Uh, FDS, the Famicom Disk System, which is what the game was originally released on. Uh, particularly, you might see in the SMB1 speed runs, like the ones we just saw, uh, that piranha plants, that kind of go through them. The hitboxes are changed in this game, uh, as well as the fact that the game over system is a bit more lenient. Uh, but with that, um, those are really the main differences. Really, it's just a lot of pure platforming here. We are going to see me get power-ups, though, because like SMB1, this game does have a advantage with fire, especially in Bowser levels. And with the fact that there are 12 Bowser uh, castles in this game, uh, 12 times 2 seconds, that's 24 seconds. Uh, so we're definitely going to go for power-ups here. Yeah, so we actually do a double jump there. Uh, if you are hit A again, once you're in the power-up transition, you're able to jump one more time. And I will note that, note that coins are more important in this game, just due to the fact that um, fireworks are not just triggered by the time you end in. So you're not going to see me uh, base it off time there. Uh, it's based on the rightmost digit of the coin count and the rightmost digit of the um, timer when you hit the flagpole. So if I had a five, in my, uh, in my timer, as well as that five in my coin count, I would trigger fireworks. And an even number is three, or even number six fireworks, odd number three fireworks. So we definitely don't want to do that. So Conte's coming here to the very end of the first castle level. And as you go through the speed run, you'll see, especially in the number worlds, the castle levels will tend to get progressively harder and harder. Uh, so um, just really all the dash fours, the, the one dash four, two dash four, et cetera, they're going to really start to ramp up in difficulty. So you um, obviously pay attention to the whole run, but especially pay attention to these castle levels because they can get pretty, pretty entertaining. Yeah, exactly. All right, so we're starting with these pipe jumps into these piranha plants here. Missing those is pretty brutal. You're going to notice I passed the green spring. One of the other differences between Lost Levels and uh, SMB1 is that Lost Levels introduced two new mechanics. Those green springs, uh, which you'll see me do later in the run, but they essentially give you a lot more jump height than the red springs. But you'll also see wind come into play in a few levels later on. You can also notice that he's uh, jumping backwards into the flagpole. It actually steps off a lot faster rather than getting it from the left side. Yes. So 2-2 two -two is one of those levels that has a really cool trick towards the end. Um, you're going to see me use my momentum to my advantage here. This is definitely a very trolly game. Uh, a lot of people liken it to Kaizo uh, SMW uh, just due to the fact that there's a lot of invisible blocks. And you're supposed to uh, do a bunch of invisible blocks to get past that, uh, platform, or that gap there, but we're able to use our momentum to just rocket over that. We got a 327. That's nice. Very good. And so another interesting thing to note is that this is the first time that the full Warpless D4 run has been shown in a GDQ with Mario. This run, Warpless D4, has been shown with Luigi twice, once by TJP in 2014 and once by Big John in SGDQ 2015, if I recall. So this is the first time we'll be, we'll be able to see it with Mario. And the reason why it's different with Mario and Luigi is that the actual characters have different physics systems. So Mario, um, you'll see it later on in, in other Mario games, but Mario has uh, better traction but slower jump height, or smaller jump height, while Luigi is much worse with traction. He's basically on ice physics all the time. 
but uh, he jumps higher, so the strats are very different. I was going for a clip there, that's why I jumped straight into a wall. There's a few levels where you'll see me go for clips. They're not easy, but they're not super um, time prohibitive. Like if I miss it, it's only like a frame rule or so. So you'll see me go for them. So this isn't the only time we've seen Mario in a GDQ event in terms of the D4 Warpless category. We had a GDQ hotfix back in July where Picante and Cosmic raced this category. And Cosmic casually set the world record with a 36.09. So Picante, you, you've got a little bit to live up to there, but I think you can do it. Yeah, this is, this is revenge for him getting world record in the race I was racing with. What am I supposed to do? So it's world record. I can't really race against that. It's Cosmic. <laughs> what can you do? Yeah, exactly. And yeah, for those who don't know, Cosmic is absolutely amazing in every single Mario game. And he recently just got sub-19 and SMB1 warpless, the final minute barrier to be broken there. So uh, kudos to him. But uh, Picante heading into 3-2 now. Yes. First water level of the game. First of three. Well, three and a half. Uh, one of the castles have a water section. But the water levels in this game are significantly more difficult than those in... Uh, SMB1. You'll see me really have to use my reaction time here because while there are frame rules and patterns are dependent on frame rules, because of the length of this category, you generally don't see people memorize patterns in certain levels. So it's a lot of reaction time here. It's a lot of hoping we get good patterns. You might think the squids are the worst. I personally think the green sheeps are the worst because if they get in the way, they're extremely slow and you definitely don't want them to block your path, and you don't want to lose fire, too. So I'm actually going under there just because that squid decided not to play nice. Nicely done. These water sections are incredibly difficult. But the water levels, the underground levels, are actually pretty easy when managing coin counts because we know that once we enter that pipe, it's eight in-game seconds to the end of the level. So as long as you're able to do math, which is pretty difficult, admittedly, <laughs> you should be able to tell what fireworks, or, yeah, if you're going to get fireworks or not. Math is hard. <laughs> I did mention that this is the first time Mario Warpless D4 has been shown, but it's not the first time we've seen Warpless 8-4. And the reason why there's differences between Warpless 8-4 and D4 is one of those SNES versus FDS things, FDS being Famicom Disk System, again, what the game was originally released for. Um, in the original game, the uh, NES version essentially, if you wanted to access the letter world, you would actually have to beat the game eight times and then press a specific input on the menu to access the letter world. But this game, it's just beat 8-4 once, so we generally don't go to D4 on the NES slash FDS categories while we go to D4 in the Any% and Warpless SNES categories. Now, since we're in a maze level, uh, you kind of notice that uh, there is a little ding noise um, that pretty much indicates that he's going the correct path. Now, that didn't occur in SMB1 because uh, they didn't have the, I guess, the sound capability. The or something. Yeah, and it also doesn't occur in the Famicom version of this game as well. But uh, so that that level was a maze level, and it, it really seems like when they they made this game that they basically decided to make it the most complicated way to get through these mazes is the is the way to go. Yeah, you notice I, I don't even think you're supposed to be doing this big because I clipped through the ground there in order to get the ding. Yeah, they essentially wanted you to be small in that portion. So 4-1 and 4-2 are going to be a couple of the easier levels in the run, so I think we're going to have time for some donations. All right, that sounds good. We have $10 from Mixed Master PJ that says, Hi, Picante. Hi, Sky. Let's swim to the music, get that 5-1 super jump, and get Bruce some screen time. You have to explain that one to me, Picante. Well, there's two things to explain there. One, super jumping. I, I mentioned before that because you have slightly higher jump height when you go off enemies, you would think that wouldn't matter that much, but if you go at certain angles now, you rock it into the air, and hopefully we'll see that in 5-1 coming up because you actually save some time. But Bruce is... We love Bruce. Well, we love Bruce, mainly because he's easy to get past. Um, Bruce is fake Bowser, essentially. Certain levels have two Bowsers, and we say hi to Bruce, we say bye to Bruce. There's also a fake Bowser in 9-3, where we call him Doug. <laughs> yeah, Doug Bowser is the CEO of Nintendo. <laughs> All right, 4-3 is actually one of the first times where really RNG matters in this run. You will notice that bullet bills fly across the screen. Um, while there are good patterns, there are also some pretty bad patterns. Uh, nothing that's impossible to avoid, but it makes my life a lot harder. All right, and good patterns. Really good, good patterns, yes. Especially the one, uh, the last bill there. You could actually get it so it's 
right near the ground, and you have to do a frame-perfect jump to, to get past that gap there. So we're going to see in 4-4 at the end of this level, um, there's going to be a potaboo and a fireball and, and some different things here. So it's a little tricky, but on the SNES version, uh, the potaboos always go all the way up to the ceiling, whereas on the Famicom version, uh, the height of the potaboo will be dependent on the frame that you get there. So Here's a clip. Nice clip. So I do this a little left right because the fu oh okay well oh. <laughs> now I'm dead. <laughs> I was gonna say I do that a little left right because this level specifically has um, some bad fire bars I could get. Now we're in a bit of a pickle uh, just due to the fact that being small. Uh, like makes a spicy pickle. Harder. Yeah, spicy pickle. Uh, <laughs> I have a pickle emote on Twitch. Um, but yeah, let's go for this pipe jump. Okay, we didn't get it. It's fine. We just have to be careful with the end here. 4-4 four, four is one of those levels where the game does not want you to beat it. You're not getting past it. Oh. I'm going to wait this out. Yeah. I, I think I would have made it if I went under that, but that was really close. Yeah, that's definitely one of the trickier uh, endings to the castles here. So nicely done by Picante. And he's going to head, head into 5-1, <laughs> where we're hopefully going to get to see him abuse the physics of this game. Yes. Unfortunately, it's much easier when you are big, but I'm still going to go for it. Also, another thing to note between the FDS and the Super Nintendo version is uh, the loading time between 4-4 and 5-1. Uh, it's roughly 7.15 seconds if you're playing on the original FDS console. Um, this one just takes you directly to 5-1 in Super Nintendo. Yeah, so the reason why it's easier um, when you're big in this game to do certain tricks like the Super Nintendo I'm about to attempt is due to the fact that um, when you are big, the way that you hit enemies... Oh, I got it. There, there it is. Um, <laughs> the way that you hit enemies uh, is, is a little unintuitive. Basically, as long as you are going down on an enemy, uh, you, will, you will hit it. You won't get hit by the enemy. And it, when you're big especially, because your hitbox is double the size, you're able to um, essentially have downward momentum on, on certain enemies that shouldn't seem possible. You'll, you'll see that in a few later levels when I make gaps that don't really make sense. All right, luckily 5-2 is really easy to recover uh, fire in, so we did. So that super jump that Picante did actually saves time because the intended way is to reveal some hidden coin blocks, and uh, that, that just takes a little bit of time. So that was a big time save there for him, and he's looking good through 5-2 as well. I do actually have to wait here. I did not <laughs> wait there. I didn't wait there enough. We got some celebratory fireworks. Yeah. So that's three seconds on top of me slowing down, but not enough. See, math is hard. I should have known going in there that I had to wait, but I had to, I had to think about it. So just like 4-3 being difficult because of those RNG elements, we have more RNG bills in this level. There's a few more levels with RNG bills, but they're not till later. Luckily, these are, are much more avoidable. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. I <laughs> got pretty bad patterns there, but not the worst. I'm going to actually slow down here, too. That was some good dodges. Nicely done. Yeah, very nice 5-3 there. It's a very difficult level. 5-4 is going to be an entertaining castle. I remember I mentioned that these castles get a little more difficult, and this is certainly a, a pretty challenging one. All right. That actually is one of the only cases where you can get a low boo in this game. Um... But 5-4 is actually one of my favorite levels just because it really uh, rewards you if you have good platforming ability. We are going to wait here, though, because those potaboos... Okay, well, I did not wait for the one I was supposed to. Um, those potaboos can be a bit tricky. All right, we're coming up on World 6. World 6 is actually one of the more difficult ones in the game. But being small is actually an advantage in 6-2, one of the, uh, the water levels in the game. Yeah, if you thought the 3-2 water section was hard, the 6-2 water section is, is Even very, worse. very <laughs> difficult. And fortunately, being small here opens up to bad RNG. There, are, there is RNG in this game, but a lot of it's mitigated if you have fire, uh, particularly because there's a lot of Hammer Bros in this game. And the Hammer Bros in this game work a lot differently than uh, the Hammer Bros in SMB1. They're, in, in short terms, much, much more aggressive in this game. And there's that wind again. 
Wind is definitely something harder for casual players, but uh, it's it's one of those things. With speedrunning, you just you get used to stuff. You're able to account for it. But yeah, we're coming up on six two, which is actually one of the most difficult water levels in the game. Um, debatably, the most difficult. I personally hate B two, but this is probably second most difficult. <laughs> Swim into the uh, Well, it, it actually helps me. It's a legit strat here. <laughs> Swim into the music. Yes. Also gets my groove on. I saw another thing to note. Uh, as we saw in SMB1, there are some, like, duplicate levels. But in Lost Levels, there every single level seems pretty unique until we get to the Letter Worlds. We'll see a couple of different variations of, like, 7-3 and 7-4, and then eventually C-3 and C-4. So that was actually extremely good patterning. I wish I had fire, but that being small nice. is cool too. Nice cozy 6-2, well done on the, uh, one of the more difficult levels in the game. <laughs> so we will try to recover power-ups in 6-3, but this level is kind of an RNG nightmare to recover power-ups, and you'll see why right now. And yeah, these guys don't make it easy. Doesn't mean we're gonna stop trying though. Right. There's one. And here's two. I'm gonna actually play the safe. Sometimes they go up and get in your way. So we're back on track here. All right. Nicely done. <clears throat> so six four is another one of those maze levels. We're gonna do some shenanigans in the beginning. It's actually why I really uh, need audio whenever I run this game, uh, just due to the fact that the ding really helps us here. Yeah, so, okay, well, I, I didn't get the P speed, but anyway, the game wants you to go under there. We don't wanna go under there. He unfortunately did a frame perfect jump, which didn't allow him to get speed. Yeah. So that was one of those frame perfect tricks you don't wanna do. Just playing too good, you know? So we actually got some bumps. So essentially when you go and you hit a you hit a uh, wall backwards, it scrolls the screen a little bit. Oh, oh Jesus. my god. <laughs> he didn't even give you a chance to yeah. go there. I've actually never seen the fireball. Never seen it before. Yeah, I'm gonna game's always to willing to throw something new at you. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'm hitting these backwards because it scrolls the screen slightly further to the right, and when I do that, uh, it allows me to hit this platform at the end uh, earlier, and it makes this jump easier. All right, Bowser, don't do this this time. <laughs> yeah. There we go. It was interesting, to say the least. All right, we're in there. So World 7 is, is really where it starts ramping up difficulty. 7-2 uh, being the halfway mark in this run, uh, just due to the fact that there are 52 levels, and that's level 26. <laughs> we're actually going for star here just because I'm small. There is some RNG here. Please be nice, Chiefs. They were. Cool. Excellent. That um, star grab is a lot more difficult than it looks because of all the uh, enemies coming at you. And the wind. And the wind, yep. But you made it look easy. Yeah. That's what speedrunning does. <laughs> yeah, so luckily, 7-2, 7-3, not super different with fire and no fire, but um, we still definitely want to recover that in World 8 when we can. This is another one of those maze levels. There's actually a couple maze levels outside of castles, which I think is new for SMB2 or SMB1. Um, basically, if I were to not go in this pipe, it would just loop the beginning section over and over again. See Elektu. Elektu plays nice when you don't go slow. Ooh. All right. Yeah, that, that looks a lot <laughs> scarier when you're small. When you're when you're big, you kill that piranha plant, go towards the top, but you can make that jump. You just had to gotta have a leap of faith there. 
7-3 is a very interesting level. You're going to see Picante make use of the green springs that he was talking about because this level is all about controlling Mario in this wind and using these green springs to get through this level. Yeah, I think this is where every single casual player quits for the first time. Definitely. Because unless you absolutely know what you're doing, it's kind of hard. All right, we're going to go for conserving our momentum on this pipe here. We got it. This allows us to skip this spring. You have to have the correct momentum and the correct placement on the spring in order to make this. And it's still tight. And over the fire bar, and beautifully done on that right. level. That is a very challenging level when you're, very, when you're starting out speedrunning, as, or as Picante mentioned, casually. So uh, now we're into 7-4. We're going to see 7-4 again, and we're going to see 7-3 again later in this run. But uh, now we're into another tricky castle. Yes, this is actually uh, tied with C4, considering it's the same level um, for hardest Bowser in the game. Um, the level is also extremely difficult, so hopefully I'm able to get this first try. It's also super punishing if I die, especially on Bowser, because it's one of the longest castles. But yeah, you see when I have fire here, these, these can be extremely tight. They're already pretty tight when I'm small. A lot of people think that was like an intended uh, dev. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Bowser. There we go. There we go. That fire bar placement uh, right in front of Bowser makes it incredibly difficult. And Bowser's throwing hammers here, so uh, you can't necessarily commit to going over him either. And that's what makes this Bowser so tough. Especially when they're going counterclockwise instead of clockwise. Yep. Yeah, when you're small, it's basically pray for good RNG. We got good RNG there. Not the best, but I will definitely take it. So now we are into World 8, which would be the final world of the FDS version if you didn't get, uh, if you didn't beat the game eight times, as Picante mentioned. But, oh, beautiful clip there. Yeah, that one makes it look easy. That's that super jump physics again, by the way. Yep. But uh, here we're going to continue on because, yeah. as we mentioned, and, and these Hammer Bros are treacherous in terms of RNG. Sometimes there's nothing you can do about them. Um, there is a little bit, there, you can do some safety strats there where you go to the left side of the screen and, uh, <laughs> kind of wait them wait out, but uh, Picante had the power up to be able to take the damage there. Yeah, I was actually going for fire, but it relies on good RNG there. We'll get fire in 8-4, it's fine. 8-2, another one of those maze levels. Um, this one has a pretty awkward uh, jump that you actually have to do casually too, so they really wanted to make this difficult. Um, essentially, if you don't hit this block right here, there we go, you loop the level. But now we're in the sky. One of the entertaining things they did is they put a star there uh, earlier in the level so that casual players would get the star and then they'd go bop that Koopa and then have no way to climb that vine. So uh, they, they really trolled us in this game with the yes. design. Yeah, so another interesting difference between uh, the FDS and SNES versions of this game is 8-3. They made it slightly harder. For some reason, in the FDS version, these ending blocks I'm going to hit were just there. They weren't hidden blocks. This time, they want to make you work for it. They also completely changed the, uh, the background, so maybe that's why. Yeah, I really like these backgrounds, though. So many happy little clouds. Bob Ross would be proud. Cool story, Bob. Oh, oh I, I, I thought I got that worked. <laughs> Good job. So now we're into 8-4. Uh, also a, a bit of a maze level, but uh, obviously he knows the paths to take, and there's going to be a lot of rooms in this castle. Yes, this is by far the longest level in the run, I think. And luckily it has two uh, power-ups. Power up number one. Yeah, so we do the strat where we hug the wall just to make that a little easier. You ready for the longest tunnel ever? It's for dramatic effect, obviously. <laughs> Keep going. Just keep Keep going. One more power up towards the end of the screen here. And now we get to say hi to my favorite character in the game, Bruce. Everybody get ready to say hi to Bruce once he appears on screen. Hi, hi Bruce. Bruce. Bye, Bruce. <laughs> Bye, Bruce. <laughs> we don't have to do that to Bruce, but he was in our way that time. We love Bruce, though.
All right, okay. so that's 8-4. So if you were doing Warpless uh, FDS, that's where it would end. Um, often if you're playing All-Stars categories, so like all four games at once, you stop at 8-4 as well. But we have five more worlds. And you might be wondering, hey, why don't you do 9-4, or World 9 in, in Warpless 8-4 runs? And that's because it's a bit peculiar. In the FDS version of the game, I'm pretty sure that for some reason when you get into the bonus world, World 9, you only start with one life, so you don't generally do it. It's, it's one life, and then if you get hit, you immediately die, and then you game over, so people don't like adding that. But World 9 specifically uh, is kind of a congratulations for beating the game Warpless. They know that with warps, it is definitely easier, and this game's are, oh my god, really? <laughs> this game's uh, hard, so they wanted to give you some weird levels. So if you beat the game warpless, you get World 9. Uh, generally, they're, they're easy, but I bonked a little bit there, got a different piranha plant than I'm used to. Unfortunately, that ties RNG to be a bigger element towards the end of the game, but should be fine. These levels pay an homage to the minus world glitch in SMB1. Uh, that was confirmed by Miyamoto himself. So that's why they look really weird. Underwater flagpoles, uh, outside castles, you name it. It's also a great place for donations if we have those. All right, sounds good. We have $15 from RNG God that says, I'm a big fan of this RNG Bill guy, whoever he is. Ammunition Williams. We have $5 from Neptune Neon who says, Hey, Picante, so glad seeing you run a GDQX. Good luck. $50 from Pinkopia, who says, we love Picante. So I wanted to know Picante personally. Why'd you kill Bruce? A lot of people were wondering about that. Well, he was in the way. I mean, I, sometimes he has a pattern where you don't have to kill him, but it's, it requires him going forward or backwards enough that I can't kill him in time for him, just like him jumping. But there's another opportunity to see Bruce, and we will not be so mean, because... If I wanted to kill him, I'd have to go really out of my way to do it. This is generally considered the easiest uh, level in the run, but it's only easy if you know to go up here, because facing this... Uh, sorry, it's not Bowser, it's Doug. It's kind of a challenge. <laughs> to run right by Doug, so... Yeah. So I mentioned that because we don't have fire any anymore, uh, there is RNG now. Um, usually we kill a Goomba in 9-4, which manipulates the squid pattern here. But instead, we're just going to have to challenge the squid. And we like challenging squids. So Ooh, one of those show them who's boss. <laughs> and these blocks here actually spell out something. I always forget what it is in Japanese. Arigato. Arigato, Thank that's you. right. Thank you, Japanese. Because we beat the game as, I guess, they intended. So we got good RNG here. But it's not over. 8-1. Or sorry, not 8-1. A-1. Um, a mediocre steak sauce challenging level. <laughs> uh, but also very difficult in that um, when you're small, RNG is a large element here. Uh, specifically these hammer bros. I'm going to go middle. Hopefully he goes down. He did. Nice. And would you look at that? No more RNG. Well, there's extremely small chance of bad RNG there. So I shouldn't say anything. Oh. Lost Levels is one of those games where as soon as you say you got lucky, the game decides that you can get unlucky. So I'm, I'm glad that didn't happen either. Also, y'all, if you notice, the Koopas are moving a lot faster. Yeah. Because they actually considered it like second quest, quote unquote. I also have to go back to a previous statement. I like A1. It's not mediocre. <laughs> the steak sauce or the stage? Uh, both, actually. Okay. All right, cool. <laughs> Yeah, so this is just a standard underground level. We can get power-ups here, but it's not super fast. So we're going to choose to get them in A3 and A4. In the any percent version of this, you could do a wall jump to get to the top there, and then you'd take a warp pipe. But since we're warpless here, he's just going to run on three on the bottom there. Or if you're big, you could just break some blocks. That's true. Oh, didn't go backwards there for some reason. <laughs> Unfortunately, for some reason, when this game likes to give you fast power-ups, they put it in stages where RNG is super important. So you remember, uh, probably not by stage number, but uh, how it looked 6-3, where we got two power-ups at all these horrible uh, cheeps everywhere. Same thing here. Added squid. Oh, God. Ooh. All right. <laughs> and this one's a hidden block as well. So in 6-3, at least we could see the blocks. Ever seen a squid in the sky? You have now. <laughs> So this level is actually particularly scary just due to the fact that it has soft lock potential. So you notice that there's a spring right at the end, right? 
Um, despite this game having higher memory limits uh, and making despawns harder, if there are enough enemies on the screen, things do despawn. If that spring despawns, there's still like a spring base. Oh, for some reason, I didn't get that. We'll just get it back in B1. Um, but if you jump on the spring after it despawns, the game soft locks. That was some nice platforming there. You got all those single tile pillars there, and Potaboo's going up and down, and beautifully done by Picante in A-4. We're on to World B. B-1 might be a good spot to get the last couple donations in here if we got them. All right, sounds good. We have $20 from Kate225 that says it might not be a bulging coin purse, but I'm sure that $20 will bring a smile to Sekiro's face. And again, to repeat, that is for the bonus game Sekiro Any% percent, which we're currently $270 out of 15000 And then, of course, a quick update on the Bloodborne Glitch Exhibition. We are currently $1,763 out of 10000 So if you'd like to see those two incentives get met, please get those donations in. Hopefully getting that fire flower doesn't mess up these patterns. Cool. And on to the <coughs> last water level of the, of the game. I personally think this is the hardest, uh, not because the actual uh, navigation is hard, but the squid patterns can be incredibly cruel. We'll just have to see, though. I'm actually going to go for a strat here uh, that I would have went for in 6-2 as well. Uh, but I was small. You essentially can make your hitbox the same as small Mario by ducking while going under one of these platforms. So now I have the small hitbox. Makes getting past these enemies way easier. Um, but unfortunately, the trade-off is that I no longer have fire until I hit the ground. So I would say it's worth it because going past those squids would have been really hard. I'm going up here, actually, because those elevators that are going yeah. up and down can push Mario down into that hole there, and he will die. So that's part of the reason Picante chose the top. He also saw some fish down there that he wanted to avoid. Yes, and so it's a little bit misleading, but you die much sooner than you would think if you're approaching the bottom, um, especially because you could get your inputs eaten in water stages near currents. Um, you don't want to be close to the bottom at all. Yeah, there's actually a mechanic in this game that your input will get eaten in a certain part of the swim cycle. All right, so more RNG bullet bills. That's nice. Hopefully only no. one matters, really. Hopefully no bills of questionable intent. Nice. Whoa. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Waiting that one out. This is fine. <laughs> a little sketchy, <laughs> but we're out of it. Here there. Conte is going to try to go for another ceiling clip, I think, here in B-4. Yes. This might be the last one. This one actually saves the most time, but I would say it's the most difficult. Oh, oh. get it. Yeah, this because we could avoid this whole section here. There is also a warp zone in B-4, which is probably the first time that there's actually a warp zone in a castle level, but obviously we're not taking warp zones because it's warpless. So. Yeah, it's actually interesting in the any percent category, you have to do a save and quick because you warp to C1, go back to B4, and then you warp to D. Right, that could have been much scarier. We actually scrolled the screen based on those uh, bumps I was talking about earlier, and doing so uh, makes dodging some of those fireballs Bowser gives you extremely hard. Now we are into World C. Uh, as we mentioned in C-3 and C-4, they're going to look very familiar to you, but C-1 and C-2 a little bit different. Yes. In the FDS version, the first upside-down pipe that uh, Picante just passed, you can actually do a trick called Double Spell. Pretty much what you do is you clip into the pipe, and you can actually go down from... Uh, the top there, and it'll actually take you to the end of the stage. But unfortunately, it does not work on the Super Nintendo version. Yeah, so that's one of those uh, tricks I mentioned where if you're going down while hitting an enemy, you bounce off of it, you don't get hit. Definitely looked like I should have gotten hit there, and if I went actually slightly further to the right, I would have gotten hit. So that's a bit of a scary jump. Do we have time for a couple more quick donations? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. We have $75 from Jalmo San that says, Hey, Picante, jelly with a ton of Ys after. Oh my. And $25 from Ruby Jean that says, You are doing great, Picante. Keep it up, my dude. Woo. Woo. Okay. Well, questionable intent this time. <laughs> yeah, normally you could avoid those. I don't, I don't know what happened there. I guess we should have ducked. 
but we should be small now for the rest of the run. Unfortunately, C2 is really less, or C1 is really the last place to pick up fireworks. The, bull, uh, the bills were a little bit cruel today. Some runners actually elect to go uh, take a spring there to avoid those bills. But we're back in the casual nightmare zone. This time with an Adelac too, that means nothing as long as you don't mess up. But now that I said that, the curse has begun. In the FDS version, that lack two, if you want to play the level perfectly fast without slowing down, that lack two can still throw a troll spiny. But uh, with the strats Picante is using on this one, no issue for lack two. Yeah, so I'm actually I'm taking the safety spring there just because I was super far to left on the the spring. Uh, so loses about seven seconds. Bad for PB attempts. Great for a. Oh well, now we got three extra seconds on fireworks, but. It's okay. We didn't die. They're celebrating the important getting thing. through the level. As <coughs> yeah, so I mentioned before, uh, this version of the game is a little bit more marathon safe just due to the fact that if you game over, you only go back to the level. You don't go back to the beginning of the world. It's super brutal on the FDS version because of that. Um, the only thing that you lose when you game over in this version is checkpoints, but there isn't a checkpoint after 7-3, so we haven't had checkpoints forever. Nice. Whew. Beautiful. Yeah, so this is obviously the same castle as 7-4. The major difference being this section right here. Uh, they really didn't want to make it easy to get past with fire. Yeah, people think that was like a dev intended de-boost, but it is possible to get past it just extremely tight. This is not a great Bowser. We pen. got a rough RNG yeah. here. Bowser, please. Oh, okay. <gasps> Nicely done. He found an opening and went for it. Nailed it. Yeah, so speaking of RNG, D1 and D3 are one of the, some of the last levels in the game and some of the hardest in terms of RNG. If you have if you have fire in D1, which is not easy considering this is the level you have to get out of with fire. Um, if you have fire in D1, it's a lot less RNG. But all right, we actually got really kind uh, hammer bro patterns there. But D3 especially is notorious for ruining amazing runs. So. We'll see if we're struggling there. D3 is absolutely an incredible level. It's, it's insane. <laughs> Inspired all those horrible Mario Maker levels that you've probably played. Just enemy spam. And D2 is surprisingly easy. It's actually one of the easiest levels in the game. I guess they wanted to give you a calm before the storm. Yep. But it'll be perfect for some donations if you have them. All right, sounds good. We have $25 from Endel, who says, first time watching GDQ Live, always watch the speedruns on YouTube and enjoyed them. Cherry Scary donates $20, saying, all hail Goose, let's name Psyduck Honk in our featured friend's honor. So that's maybe the trickiest part of D2 is that spring there, but pretty easy. Yeah, super misleading, though, because you think you'd be, you'd be able to make it to the, the flagpole, but it's extremely hard. I think there, you can, but it's, it's incredibly precise. And that water, despite Mario being able to swim, totally can't swim there for some reason. Look at all these bullet bills. Yes. We're, we're getting this fire because it makes it slightly more safe, and if we messed up, we would still have mushroom. Oh, we didn't even need it. Okay, well, it's not up to me anymore. Whoa. Nicely done. Good dodge. Should have went for the bullet bill glitch at the end there, right? No, you don't want to go for bullet bill glitch on the end. That's a joke, because uh, in All Stars, it checks to see if you enter the door, not to see if you hit the flagpole, so it actually soft locks the game. But now we're in D4, the last castle. You're going to see it pays an homage to the beginning of 8 4 here, but that's only the first room. Yeah, it's trying to fool you here. Yeah, you cannot make it down that pipe. Actually, maybe you can, but it's it's not the intended way. So now we're in the overworld here, and Conte will have to do a little bit of a slowdown at the end of the, the, the level, or not, not the level, but this room here. Right there, you saw him do a slowdown. That's to let this piranha plant go down the pipe. Yeah, because blind jumps, good design, right? We get to say hi to Bruce once again, and uh, bye to Bruce, and, and this time he's uh, a little more friendly. And I can't even kill him if I want, because he's on fire. <laughs> get ready on time. When he touches the axe. And time. Ooh. 
Well, that is a Warpless V4. Again, the longest main category with original SMB1 physics. Or yeah, SMB1 physics. Um, it's kind of a gauntlet, so glad I got through it under 40 minutes here. I'd like to shout out my commentators, Kate and Supersonic. Shout out uh, my IRL friends and girlfriend, Pink Loon Games, uh, and uh, Raw Input, Milkopia, and obviously my community, my chat, and specifically uh, Darb for inspiring me to play this, and uh, Big John for being a huge part of the Lost Levels community. Um, with that, I am done with this category. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much, Picante, for that awesome run of Super Mario Brothers 2 The Lost Levels Warpless D4. Coming up, we're going to have Pokemon White 2. $50 for Medinoc. Greetings from France. Thank you so much for this fun event. Definitely worth a few hours of sleep. Good luck to all the runners, and let's see this glitch exhibition. Speaking of which, for the Bloodborne Glitch Exhibition, we are currently $1,788 out of $10,000. So if you would like to see that Bloodborne Glitch Exhibition, please get those donations in. All right, and with that, I am finished hosting for this GDQX. Thank you, everybody, for all of your support. Thank you so much for meeting that SMB1 Any% percent incentive, and I will see you all at AGDQ 2020. Taking over for the mic now will be Saku. Thank you very much again, everyone, for your support. Take care. Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Games Done Quick Express, powered by Twitch. My name is Sakura Subasa, and for those of you attending TwitchCon this weekend, make sure to visit us in room 6D on the second floor, right next to Twitch Rivals. Our marathon space will be open to spectators for 24 hours, including overnight throughout TwitchCon weekend. And with that, we're going to play a quick Twitch ad here, so I will see you soon.
All right, welcome back again to Games Done Quick Express 2019 live at TwitchCon in San Diego. We have a $50 donation here from Rue Wooly that says, let's keep Rue VV ahead for the crayons. Can't wait for the Pokemon runs. And with that, we're going to hand it on over to Scent with some prizes. Well, thank you very much. As mentioned, my name is Scent, and I am here to talk to you guys about some of the amazing prizes that you guys can donate to win. Now, it's very important. All the prizes I'm about to talk about are only available until the end of the Pokemon White 2 run, and that's coming up right after this break. So you guys are going to want to get, get your donations in as soon as possible if you want to have a chance to win some of these amazing prizes. Let's talk about a few of them. Uh, so from our friends over at Studio Pen Pen, we have this absolutely beautiful Hollow Knight friend here. Uh, Hollow Knight in a game with just an amazing amazingly unique art style, and they've, they've really captured it here. I absolutely love it. This is a uh, $10 minimum donation from now until the end of Pokemon White 2. Get your donations in for a chance to win that, man. Uh, from our good friend Vats of Goop, we have this absolutely beautiful holographic uh, Samus and Ridley print here. It's a little hard to see under the lights, but you can kind of see it's got a, got a little shiny effect to it. Looks super cool. I love it. Kind of reminds me of like an old Godzilla film uh, poster, honestly. I, it's, it's great. It's also a $10 minimum donation from now until the end of Pokemon White 2. Now, from our friends over at Avermedia, we have uh, the Avermedia live streamer duo. It's a uh, USB HDMI capture cord, you know, outputs 1080p. You plug it in, you record stuff, you stream it, you do whatever you want with it. Super cool, super functional. $20 minimum donation for this thing. Uh, you definitely want to get, get your donations in. And again, as always, it's available from now until the end of Pokemon White 2. So you're going to want to get those donations in soon. Now, from our friends over at Yacht Club Games, we actually have quite a few different prizes to talk about. Uh, first off, we have a copy of the Shovel Knight Plague of Shadows soundtrack. Uh, so many amazing tracks in the game uh, from composer Jake Kaufman. Um, and I, I'm told by a member of uh, our staff and of Yacht Club Games staff, Majikupas, that this CD might have some bonus tracks that weren't used in the game. Uh, super cool. And it's only a $5 minimum donation, guys. Like, what are you waiting for? Get those donations in. Come on. Uh, we also have this fun little Shovel Knight activity kit. Uh, it is a $15 minimum donation, and it comes with a deck of Shovel Knight-themed playing cards. Uh, you know, you got all your favorite Shovel Knight characters as the face cards here. It comes with a Codes of Shovelry handbook, which is just this beautiful little art book depicting everything in the world of Shovel Knight. Uh, it comes with a Shovel Knight activity book. Uh, specifically, it is a Digger's Diary, Activities You'll Dig. The, the game has a lot of shovel puns. You, you might have surmised that from the name. Still, a lot of fun little activities here. And, of course, some Shovel Knight Mad Libs. Um, most of them involve digging, as, as you do. And that is a $15 donation for the whole set. Also from Yacht Club Games, we have this wonderful Shovel Knight belt. Uh, looks like a sturdy belt, good quality on it. It's got a uh, Shovel Knight doing all kinds of things. He's punching with the mole gloves. He's dashing with the propeller. Um, you know, cool. It's a belt. It'll hold your pants up. It probably won't hold your shovel up. Don't recommend it for that. But I do recommend you donate at least $10 to get in for a chance to win it. Um, now, of course, we have... Ooh, almost forgot this guy over here. We have this beautiful little Hollow Knight uh, Amigurumi knitted figure. I, I love the Amigurumi art style. Basically, they've, they've crocheted this guy together as almost one continuous piece out of uh, different colors of yarn. It's, it's so cool. Um, I believe he is a $15 minimum donation from now until the end of Pokemon White 2, and he comes to us by way of Morbid Knits. Uh, she's done some absolutely wonderful stuff for us in the past, so huge shout-outs to her, and, and thank you so much for, for this little Hollow Knight guy we got here. You know, I'm going to leave him right here because I like him so much. Um, finally, guys, of course, we have the two prizes that are running throughout the entire event. Uh, if you donate at least $30, you'll get entered into a chance to win a custom uh, banner. It's a six-foot-long banner. Uh, for S not SGDQ, for GDQ X 2019. Only one of them has been printed. Uh, we've thrown it up on our social media before. It looks super cool. It's an LOK's very distinct style. Uh, and again, $30 minimum donation, only one of them. Like, what's not to love? GDQ memorabilia right there. And of course, for $50, you can get entered into a chance to win a custom Nintendo Switch sent to us by Activision, made to look like, uh, you know, themed after Spyro the Dragon. There's some great pictures of it up on our website, uh, gamesdonequick.com. Check out the tracker, because it's going to have 
pictures of all the prizes we have available, as well as information on future prizes, uh, upcoming speedruns, and incentives that you can put those donations towards. Because remember, guys, you don't have to put your donations toward prizes. You can put them towards incentives and still be eligible. Incentives like all of the characters that you can name during this upcoming Pokemon run, and more importantly, an amazing glitch exhibition after Bloodborne, and our next bonus game in the schedule, Sekiro. You guys really want to see that run. There's air swimming. There's like tree manipulation. It's, it's crazy. I love that game casually. I don't understand the speed run. You want to understand the speed run. Anyway, that's going to be all the time we have for me to show off some prizes. I've been sent. Uh, we're going to throw it back up to the front as we get ready for Pokemon White 2 with our runner Pulse Effects. <laughs> Thank you so much to Scent for that awesome prize exhibition. And speaking of exhibitions, as uh, Scent so kindly reminded us, we do have a Bloodborne glitch exhibition that we are currently needing to meet the goal for in order to see here. It is $10,000, but we are sitting at $1,818. Now, we have, we have a fair bit of people in chat right now. I think maybe, maybe it's time we can start a, a $5 train and see if, we can, uh, see if we can get both the Bloodborne Glitch exhibition and the bonus game Sekiro met in one speed run. Can we speed run donations? I believe we can. And we do have a $500 donation from Maximus that says, I want to see the Samurai Boy go fast. <laughs> we have a $222 donation from WarTab that says, good luck to Pulse Effects. Keep it up, man. Drillbur, gotta get the name of best pokey out there. And just a reminder of the charity that it, all of these donations are going to. There are millions of people with disabilities who can't play video games without expensive, specialized equipment. The Able Gamers Charity helps gamers with disabilities by providing that equipment free of charge. Their mission is to create opportunities that enable play in order to combat social isolation, foster inclusive communities, and improve the quality of life for people with disabilities. We have a $100 donation from IA Unlimited that says, gotta make dad proud of us pandas. The great cause doesn't hurt either. And uh, we're going to give a quick shout out to one of our partners here, The Yeti, supporting Games Done Quick events since 2012 and official t-shirt sponsor for Games Done Quick. Get official GDQ tees and more at theyeti.com. We have a $10 donation from Poot5 that says, all aboard. 
And we have a $10 donation from Scarth that says, gotta get these bonus games. And that's right, if we do not hit these goals, we don't get to see either the Bloodborne Glitch exhibition or the bonus game. So we definitely want to see those. We have a $25 donation from Mystic Umbreon that says, Hey Pulse, good luck on the run. P.S. I need coffee. And we have a $15 donation from Live in Life that says, Coffee Crew represent. Pulse is going to do an amazing job. We have a $10 donation from Hill Street Blues that says, let's go. Good luck on the run and hope everyone has had some good coffee. I'm sensing a theme here. We have a $25 donation from Rizakin85 that says, bless up for Drillbur. We have a $30 donation from Tim214 that says, can't wait to see Bloodborne. We also have a $50 donation from Kais that says, Hey Saku, always nice to hear my favorite host during GDQ. Good luck to Pulse Effects. Donation goes to Host Choice. And we also have a $20 donation from Lights King that says, Pokemon and then Legend of Zelda? Count me in. We have a $30 donation from Gosu Wolfman that says, so hyped for this Pulse Run, this is gonna be amazing. So excited to donate to this charity, it's such a great cause. And with that, we're gonna throw it over.